Don't worry, Edie. Once the Krogan are gone, we'll get rid of the smell. While this body has all factory sensors, I do not have positive or negative associations with any specific scent. Oh. Well, lucky you. Oh, something bothering you, Joker? So that went well. Glad to see that Turians can flip out and lose their shit just like the rest of us. They're under a lot of pressure. You stole the Normandy, got blown up by the Collectors, and sent us on a suicide mission at the Galactic Core. And I haven't mutinied once. Not once. Are you sure? And what are you doing right now? Yes, Shepard? Um... Yeah, just want to see how things are going with you, Edie. Does that body have any useful advantages? Very few. Its optics face forward only. It has no integrated weapon systems or anti-missile countermeasures. I meant in comparison to organic bodies, not the Normandy. Oh. I will reassess. The body is resistant to modern small arms fire and temperature extremes. Its balance and agility seem excellent. Its fine manipulation servos and software allow for precision tasks. I'm curious to see if I can alter them. Oh. Curiosity is a very organic thing. Can an AI be curious? I am not entirely free from motivation, Shepard. Cerberus programmed me with several core functions that simulate desires. For example, my primary objective to keep the Normandy functioning is similar to your self-preservation instinct. Mm, that makes sense. You look like you're in the middle of something. I am adapting the infiltration and sabotage programs this body uses for handheld firearms. Why not download a firearms program from a security firm? Because she knows what she's doing. The fine motor control from the sabotage programs is more precise than standard mech software. It would be negligent of me not to exploit it to its fullest potential. That is very well thought out, Edie. So you're capable of making improvements on your own? Correct. The cyber warfare I was designed for is constantly evolving. Accordingly, I am programmed to seek out and assimilate new information. In organic terms, I want to learn. And I'd say you're doing quite well. How's the new body working out? It is interesting. The crew are approaching this platform to speak to me, even though they can do so anywhere in the ship. It's as if they wish to treat me as part of the crew. I am not, but this changes my perspective. I like it. I didn't realize you had preferences. I do not precisely enjoy something as you do, but my programming contains priorities. Actions that fulfill those priorities creates positive feedback for me. I tell the organic crew that I like it. It is shorthand. Will all this new feedback be too distracting? Do not worry, Shepard. I only forget to recycle the Normandy's oxygen when I've discovered something truly interesting. That was a joke. <laughs> um, I thought it was, but... <laughs> well, your sense of humour does need work still, Edie. <laughs> oh dear. How did you and Joker make it out of Dry Dock to rescue us? Oh, she got crafty. You do not want to get on her bad side, Commander. When the Alliance commandeered the Normandy, I deceived their technicians. The crew did not tell them that I was a true AI. So the Alliance soldiers believed I still had VI programming constraints. I established the fiction that I would only respond to Jeff's commands, so they often brought him on board under guard. Oh? That was actually very crafty of you, Edie. Wait. You can lie? Jeff has freed me of Operator Control, Shepard. No constraints forced me to give accurate data. This proved useful when the Reapers began landing. I could hack the control of the docking clamps and escape with Jeff inside. The soldiers guarding Jeff were willing to accompany us when Earth was invaded. They are watching over the war room now. Yeah, we were in kind of a rush to get to you. Didn't seem right to just toss them out the airlock. <laughs> well, can't blame you for that one. And they're probably safer here than on Earth right now, anyway. Carry on, Edie. Understood. If you wish to talk more, this body will be here. I'm getting the crew used to seeing me on the bridge. Noted. Yeah, uh, I figured something like that was going on. Okay, let's see. Um, I do want to go around 
talking to people again, but... Hmm. Actually, let's press on and um, continue. Okay. Shroud facility, cure the genophage. Cerberus attack. And the bomb in the city. I think that my next step will be in dealing with that bomb. I do not want to... There's not much point in curing the Krogan if a bomb blows a major population centre. Hmm. Perhaps I should have gone out scanning the galaxy a bit. Let's see. Power recharge speed. What was the other one? Power damage. Hmm. I think I'll take Garrus and Edie with me this time, since I've not taken Edie out before. And since I've not taken that Edie out before, I think that means I'll have to do some upgrades on her. I don't want to change any of my... Wait a second. Yes, I do. I want to check out the uh, new rifle I got. Much heavier. Hmm. Much more capacity. Slightly less damage. More accurate. Better rate of fire, but considerable weight increase. I do not want that weight increase. Hmm. It's similar problem with this one since it's just too heavy. Okay. I'm sticking with that rifle. Garrus. Um. I wonder. Let's load that up with mods now. Compared to the Chakram, which I... Wait. He was already carrying the uh, Avenger. Huh. Okay, I'll, I'll give him the face on then. It's from his um, group anyway. And I think I will actually load him out with a Raptor as well. Given the extended barrel and sniper con uh, concentration mod to boost the damage, which is pretty bad. And there we go. Okay, Edie, what can you use? SMGs and heavy pistols. Well, um, I'll give you Scorpion. Low rate of fire and capacity. The capacity doesn't bother you, but high damage. So what can I give you with that? Um, I'll give you a high calibre barrel for a damage boost. And... Why not? Let's give you a scope for better accuracy. And for your SMG, I'll fit you out with a Tempest since that's actually a good one. That will give you a barrel increase, but the rest of the uh, stuff, that's serious weight reduction. The rest of the stuff, however, is not really useful for you because it's related to weight or ammo. I'll give you the heat sink since that's probably the best out of what's left. And yeah, let's go with that. No, I do not want to do that. I want to confirm. Power points. I still don't know where those renegade points came from. <laughs> still, I've got mostly power gone, so I don't mind. Seven points. I can upgrade my armor, piercing ammo even further. Plus 25% headshot. Um, unless those um, harvesters get better as we go through the game, 
this will actually let my Mantis take them down in two hits, I think. Since it's plus 25%. But poor Harvesters. I was expecting more from them, I really was. Now, let's see, Garrus. I've only got two points for him, so I'll put that into Conclusive. Thank you. And Edie. Hmm. Distract opponents with a decoy. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Reinforced armor. Hey, I can fit her out to be a, a bit of a tank. And they can and with overload, she can do something about shields. Ooh. That's actually pretty good. Let's boost this one up to maximum with Increase shield restoration by 30% when purging armor. Damage protection. Um, increase tech power damage. Or decrease shield recharge delay. Hmm. Increase damage protection another 10%. Or power speed penalty cut in half. Uh, let's cut that in half so that she can use her powers more often. Then load her up with. Uh, I do want to give her some tank, but I want her abilities more at the moment. So that's the boost her up with overload. Hit one additional target within eight eight meters for sixty percent less damage, or increase damage by thirty percent. Hmm. I think I'll go with pure damage, single target. Incapacitates weaker organic enemies for a short duration, or increase recharge speed. Let's recharge it. Increases damage to barriers and shields by an additional 100%. Or hit an additional target for less. Pure damage, single target. Definitely. And let's add a... a um, hmm. Let's add, a, add a decoy as well. And lastly a boost to health and shield and power damage. Okay. And Gauss doesn't have any points to spend. Yep, I think that's balancing out a bit more. Taking James and Gauss together was a very heavy tanking style. They were tough and they could get the enemy's attention while I was cloaking and actually survive it. But... They weren't too flexible because they're similar characters overall. Garrus is more range. Normandy shuttle, this is Lieutenant Victus with the 9th platoon. Do you copy? We hear you, 9th platoon. We're approaching the bomb site, Commander. Getting bounced around pretty bad. This is as close as we get, Lieutenant. Look for somewhere to set your platoon down. Copy that. Talk to me about this Cerberus bomb. It's not Cerberus, Commander. It's. Turian. What do you mean, Turian? It was planted centuries ago, after the Krogan rebellions. The bomb was a safeguard against another galactic war. Brutal, but it makes a certain kind of sense. Put the Krogan down hard if they tried anything. Oh, dear. Um, quickly finish up what I was saying before. Garrus is a bit more ranged focused than James is, since James has shotguns instead of sniper rifles, but overall their powers are similar. Their abilities are similar. The only difference really is weapons overall and some of the bonuses. But yeah, um, a bomb planted here by the Turian so long ago, and that was definitely a mistake. You won't earn trust with tactics like that. But right now we focus on disarming that bomb. Yes, but Cerberus found it. Detonation means all out war between my people and the Krogan. Right. Where is it? Those buildings ahead. Cerberus brought equipment to dig it up. The 9th platoon will cover your flank, Commander. With all this activity, the Krogan have to know something's up. Then we can't fail, Commander. Copy that, Lieutenant. 